everyone. Um, today we're going to make some kind of cave structures and it uh, came from a nice donation off my website and a request to do this. So uh, let's just see how fast we can figure it out. So I'm just going to type in grasshopper to start off here and we're going to do it a little bit less fully parametric today. So I'm just going to start with three different surfaces for now. And then the top one we can start to play with maybe later. So I'm going to just rebuild that 5533 for now. And we'll play with that in just a bit. So let's type in surface. We'll set the top surface quickly. And so in my mind, to make these kind of cave structures, we're going to have to do some population. And there's going to be different types. So I'm going to type in, uh, let's do 1,200 here. This might be a little high, but let's just see where it takes us. And then the next ones, we're going to delete that 1,200 because that's going to be a, way too many. Type in 25 for now. And what we'll do here is just copy and paste this same one down. We can plug the number into that one. And let's just line these up just a bit. Okay, and so we'll assign the middle one to here, so one surface, and we'll assign this one to here, so one surface. So it should look something like this, and 1200 might be a lot for now. So let's make sure we're doing this right. Okay, and from here, what I want to type in is closest point. So the P stand for point to search from, so it'd be these and the clouds to search. And what we're going to do is type in line from here to the closest points. Okay, so we're going to start to get stuff just like this. And then the next one, we're simply just going to plug in the top to the bottom, just like so. So you kind of make the guy almost tree structures. Then from here, we're just going to divide these out. Like so. And let's just start with 25 for the number of points. See where it takes us. And then after this, we're going to use uh, Chromodorus, this plugin here. This is going to create a mesh for us. So we'll need to build the isosurface, and we'll have to, what else do we need here? Sample voxels. All right, so the first portion here is our points. We can flatten that so they all stay in one singular list. And then from here, we need to add a charge. So the charge, let's do 0.25. Uh, plug that in here. The strength is 1.2. Let's try that. And then the effective range, I believe. The effective range do 2.5. And that's about it for there. And then we'll just plug the BD into the BD here. And then this one, sample value. Let's just do 0.25 again, and we'll obviously play with this. All right. So what this is doing is going to start to create a wrapping mesh that starts to start to form over what we just created previously with those little tree structures. Okay, we can hide the voxel samples. That's pretty much what she was asking for, and we'll play with it, some of these surfaces later just to get some variation in the overall look and feel. But for now, let's try to make this smoother. So I'm just going to type in smooth mesh, put the smoothing algorithm on here, and then uh, we'll type in point, one point, and that'll be the strength of the smoothing. And then let's type in three for the number of iterations. I think it's this one, iterations, yep. And we'll see where that gets us. Okay, so that looks a little too smooth for me. So 
And another thing I want to do is just put in Catmaw Clark, just so we get a nice uh, smoothness happening all around, and it's a nice mesh. I'm going to turn down the strength just a bit, and iterations. We'll see where that takes us in a bit. Let's type in units real quick. Or meters. I'm just going to scale this up so she has a reference point. Let's do 200 feet. There we go. That's looking a lot better. All right. So she wanted some cave structures that start to kind of cloud at the top and then start to thin out near the bottom. So that, and then she also requested that these little portions down here start to get a little fatter. So on the bottom portion here, what we can type in is uh, we could just do circle for instance, and each one of those circles down here will have a radius that we can start to play with here. So I'm just going to type in 5. We'll straighten all these out real quick. And then from here, we can just type in or plug and play that circle parameter into our divide, and that will start to make a kind of a fattening thing down at the bottom. And obviously, we can play with you know where the columns start and everything else just based on height. So super easy uh, let's see here let's make those circles just a bit smaller okay and then if we want to really bump up what's happening up here we just got to increase the density of points which that doesn't prove to do too much or we could actually start to play with here and we could play with this just a bit more Okay. Now if we go back over to Rhino, we can start to mess with each one of these surfaces as well. So we'll just type in rebuild 5533 again. And if we wanted to give some kind of formal qualities to this overall mesh or cave structure, we can start to do that. We can even bring it up in the middle. So obviously caves aren't just going to be flat on top, so we can start to play with that. Just like so. And we can do the same for the middle section there as well. I'm going to leave the bottom relatively flat. I think she wanted to create kind of a maze. So there we go. Just get a few variations in here. Yeah. kind of elevationally make it a little bit different as well. So it's starting to look like alien hands or something. Looking pretty cool. And so from here, all I'm going to do is, since we only have 108 points, I'm going to increase the density on the populate geo at the beginning. So let's just bring that up. We'll start to get kind of a coral looking thing, which looks pretty sweet. Bring that down just a smidge here. So that's looking really cool. Awesome. Really, really cool. And maybe instead of circle, I don't know if the circle is doing anything for me right off the bat. So I might just delete that out. And let's just copy and paste the bottom populate geo. And I'll increase the number up quite a bit. And then we'll just plug the points in this one into our voxel sample and see what that gets us. We might have to bring that number up to like 1,200 as well. Just so we get some results happening. There we go. That's looking a little bit more organic in nature. So that's looking pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to undo. I kind of want to stretch this out just a bit so we can kind of make more of a canopy. There we go. And from here, I'm just going to lower this number so we get some kind of air popping through. All right, so that's pretty much it for the grasshopper. And 
let's just go ahead and make a landscape for it. Let's see what it renders out like real fast. Let's take these surfaces, group them, and hide them. That's looking pretty cool. Pretty sweet. Might just do something really quickly. Just want to make this top surface a little bit more out there. All right. I'm going to type in home group. Let's make it a little bit crazier. So let's type in oh, 25 and 25 just for the top. And let's pull some just random points up. Obviously, we could do this parametrically and make it more generative or parametrically driven. But sometimes hand modeling is not so bad. Let's see what this does real quick. Type in Grasshopper. Might have to hit F5 to refresh. There we go. That might look cooler. Yeah, that's better. I like this. Okay, so we'll just bake this out really quickly. Looking really cool. What's it render out like? It's a little alien finger still, so let's just add some more points at the beginning. Yeah. That might be a bit too many. There we go. Perfect. That's looking really sweet. I'll try one more time, just lowering those points again. Very cool. All right. So I think that's about it. So we'll just bake that out, see what it looks like real quick. I like it. All right, so let's make a landscape for it. So I'll just type in bounding box as usual. Okay, switch over to shaded so we can see. Okay, I'm gonna bring this up just slightly. And what should this scene be like? Uh, well, it's kind of cold and rainy here, so Let's make it kind of cold and rainy here. So I'm going to type in 125 for the points, 125 for the points, nice rebuild. I'm going to invert my selection, lock what we just created in Grasshopper. And let's just make that a little bit more square. So let's turn on our points. And maybe this is kind of an island, halfway in the water, half in the water situation. So this would be our little island, maybe a cluster of them. Okay, let's type in invert. I'll drag this down for the, the water. Drag it down kind of far. Smooth that out, just so we get some variation. And from here, I'm gonna move that island just over so it's sitting on some land. it up just ever so slightly there we go okay so that'll be our sand or maybe we'll do kind of a snowy water scene I'll make that grass okay and let's make a water surface let's bring that up so we can start to see where the water's coming in just like so I like it. All right, and then we'll type in unlock. Let's assign a material to our new mesh. And we'll just call this rock. Perfect, we're all ready for Lumia. All right, so it loaded up really quickly and nicely into Lumion. So uh, we're just gonna start loading up with the materials. Uh, so the grass will obviously just, let's just make it wild grass for now. And it might be a little bit slow, but that's all right. Just be patient with it. There we go. That's looking really nice. I might want to make it just a bit taller. There we go. Maybe a little bit bigger on the 
size. Okay, water obviously is going to be water. And let's do calm tropical. Looks great. And then for the actual cave structure, I'll just try some, I guess, fur maybe. See what it looks like, I suppose. Let's do warm white fur. All right. And let's mess with some settings real quick. Let's do fur size quite a bit bigger. Let's do bending force all the way up so we get some kind of nice circling happening everywhere. Fur length. Make that a little bit smaller. Velvet scale, we'll turn that down. If we get too furry with it, it'll look a little bit weird. Same with the size, so we want to be cautious of that. And what else? I don't want the gravity force to affect anything. Let's bring up the roughness, and I think that'll be pretty good to go. Objects, um, I think for today, we're just going to do this scene relatively simple. So let's just add kind of sporadic grass patches here, maybe some cattails here and there. Nothing crazy. Uh, what else do we got here? Got some tall grass. Let's do that in the foreground. All right. Nice and out in the distance there. Peeping out of the water. It's not here. I don't even know if you'll be able to see it, but that's all right. Let's do just clusters now. Okay. All right. Um, let's do maybe a little kid running through all this. We don't need clusters of that kid. Okay. Let's show him kind of running into it, maybe. Just like so. And let's add some birds, maybe a couple in the foreground here. them so they're kind of looking at each other. The biggest thing with Lumion, and I don't know why, but it always seems like the birds are supposed to be swimming. They don't look like they're swimming. They look like they're hovering. So I'm going to drop these down just a bit. There we go. All right, let's add some birds up in the sky. Let me do some flying seagulls here. I'm going to do some clusters with these. great. Okay, we're going to move those over. Okay. Oop. There. Lift them up just a bit. Maybe that kid's actually running from these birds. That's looking pretty good. And then the background might look a little bit empty. So what I want to do is let's just add some tree clusters way out there. Doesn't really matter necessarily like if they're sitting on water because you won't be able to see it. That one might be a little bit too close, so let's delete that one. Oh shoot, we did clusters, didn't we? Yeah, that's all right. Select a bunch, just delete them up. not showing up here. That's all right. Maybe it's this one. Eh, we'll just see what happens, I guess. 
Anyway, let's pick a nice view. Oh, they are in the background. Little air in the landscape or Lumion. All right. Let's pick a nice view. Where's it go? Right there, tree. Did we lose our model? Or are we underwater? Underwater. Okay. All right. Let's see where this takes us. Let's do custom style. Do realistic. Um, let's do pre precipitation here a bit. Just a little bit so we get that nice fog in the background. Let's do real skies for this particular one. dramatic. We got that kid running in the nice distance there. We got some duck swimming. We might have to add some more trees through here, which is fine. I want to fix the camera two point. Okay, a two point perspective there. Perfect. All right, I'm just going to save this view quick. Back to build again. I'm just going to add some tree clusters again out in the distance. Okay. I'll go out here. All right. I like it. And it doesn't look so barren in the background. There we go. That's much nicer. All right, now all we have to do is just mess with the time of day. It's funny, I don't see any birds there, so I'm going to move two of those birds inward a little bit. Okay. I don't even know if, where their selection point is right off the bat. So, a darn tree. I don't think it exists, though. Yeah, it doesn't. Oop. Let's see if we can select. Oh, we gotta turn on people and animals. Where are they all flying to? They should be in there. Maybe we'll just lower them up a little bit. They're not so high. All right, I see them now. So, let's see what it renders out like. There we go, much better. Oh, shoot. Well, at least we have some ducks, I suppose, but I kind of want those birds to be in there. have to mess with the animation timeline on those, which is fine. All right, so we'll just go to FX. And let's see here, variations, where's the animation scene, time warp. Okay, so we'll just mess with this, try to get as many birds as we can in there. I want to get more than just two. There's a lot in there. Ooh, I like this one. That looks great. All right. Let's mess with just a little bit of lighting on the real skies. See where that takes us. I think this would be pretty good. Okay, that lighting looks pretty nice. Let's just try this out. Desktop. Folder. Okay. All right. The sun's definitely off, which is all right. Maybe get some 
different different sunlight in there. Everything else is looking pretty nice. See if I can cancel. The fur might be a little bit too furry, so we might want to turn that down. A little bit misleading on the preview. Like it seems like it should be a lot of sun in there, but it doesn't show a lot. Okay, I'm going to tone down this fur just a bit. It's not so long. I feel like we're missing detail. So make the length just a bit smaller. length, maybe turn down the fur size, bring up the length. There we go. And let's try to render again. Let's see what this gives us. Pretty close to what I, I'm thinking. Kind of a soft touch to it. Still think the length of the fur needs to be up just slightly more. But other than that, pretty nice. Maybe we'll scale up a little bit of this. I like it, yeah. All right. Okay, what I'm gonna do is actually go over here. I'm gonna just tone down the brightness real quick. Okay, let's go to precipitation really quickly. Bring up that extra fog. So it gets just a bit more moody. Okay. And from here, let's just adjust that fur one more time. I might need the ducks over. All right. So I guess we'll just kind of do some highlighting around it everywhere. So um, maybe just brighten up some areas, kind of blast it out just slightly. Kind of highlight that kid, make the grass a little bit greener. Just, just trying to run away from birds. So and the sky is a little bit darker than what I was expecting, but that's completely fine. Just brighten up with the burn tool. And then from here, I always try to do the auto color, just see what it looks like. And that looks really nice. That's auto tone too. I don't like that. It's auto contrast too. That's pretty sweet. Okay. And I might mix it up. So auto tone, which is this, might just kind of copy the layer and bring it down just slightly. So we have a mixture of the two. Basically from here, the usual vignetting. So control shift N, hit B for brush. And we'll just do a little dark down here, a little dark up here. Tone that down just slightly. And I think we'll just erase some spots just so we get kind of an ovaling effect here. Other than that, I think this rendering's done. Fun little project. Um, if you guys have any other ones that you have in mind or need help with, send me a message through my email. Uh, again, like and subscribe on Instagram and YouTube, and I will talk to you very soon.